Hi, I'm Audie Nemco. Here are four short, short stories I've written recently. Uh, the first is called Intermission. Luke finished playing the Appassionata Sonata, bowed, and strode off stage for intermission. In the dressing room, he thought, the note mistakes were no big deal, but was I fully present? Did I take enough risks? Did I look stupid waiting so long at the piano before starting? And I think my bow was too long. The applause wasn't that loud. I hate theatricality. Three minutes, Mr. Francis. Luke continued to think. Ugh, Putin, like Hitler. We've tried to destroy the Jews from the beginning. The Romans, Crusades, the Inquisition, pogroms, Holocaust, the double standard for Israel, even compared with Iran. Enough, Luke. You gotta do Gaspar de la Nuit, it's hard. Think of Argerich playing it, Pogorelich. You'll never come close. How much does it matter? Luke strode on stage as if all he did during intermission was take a sip of water. Of course, the audience expected him to follow the ritual, bow with a modest smile, respectfully approach the piano, take a moment to become one with the music, and begin. But after Luke bowed, instead of looking at the so-called fourth wall, that's the back of the auditorium, he looked right in the, at the audience, eye to eye, for a moment with individual after individual. He stood silently and then asked the audience, does music matter? He waited for that thought, which is felt by many but rarely verbalized, to sink in. And even if music matters, does it matter whether I play a little differently or a little worse than other pianists you can watch and hear for free on YouTube? Even if I luck out and play my best, it's going to be worse than Argerich, Horowitz, Arau, Rubinstein, Christian Zimmerman, and dozens, probably hundreds of pianists I've never even heard of. And think of the millions of suffering piano students, violin students, tuba students, for God's sake, sacrificing more of life's meaning, more pleasure, trying just to learn the notes of hard stuff, even easy stuff like Fear Elise, let alone create magic with music, or even rock music, blues, punk, world, house, hip hop, show tunes. They'd be better off studying science, maybe even better off just giggling with their friends while watching cat videos. What does matter? Huh? Does excellence matter? Does making people more equal matter more? Does it matter less? Is peace the answer? If we're peaceful, will Putin try to take over the world like Hitler wanted to, except we bomb the shit out of him? I'm not sure what matters, or even what's right. So I'll just play. Anyway, that story is called Intermission. The next story is called Black First, Then Red. Sean wanted a promotion. No, he needed a promotion. He was burned out on being a beat cop, and even though cop salaries were good in the Bay Area, he was having trouble making the rent. Sean's mentor advised, they're always looking for people on the bomb squad. They mainly just sit around. There aren't that many bombs to dismantle. Take the course. Sean did and was taught that bomb dismantling is less complicated than one might suspect. Mainly, you have to just first cut the black wire that connects to the detonator, and only then the red one. Sean applied for the next bomb squad opening and, to his surprise, was hired over people with experience. Maybe I did really well in the interview? Indeed, in his two months on the job, there were no bombs to dismantle. The squad just did simulations. Find detonator, cut black, then red, easy peasy. Then, off duty on a Saturday night, Sean took his daughter to a Green Day concert. A row ahead, he'd heard ticking from a backpack underneath the seat. Sean used his foot to slide it toward him. The ticking was louder. He pulled the zipper of the backpack just enough to see inside. It was a bomb. And indeed, it was easy to spot its detonator. Then, in horror, he saw that the two wires were purple and orange. Anyway, that story is called Black First, Then Red. The next story is called Wonder Woman. I hate that I had reached the mandatory retirement age for National Park Police, 57. I still feel young, love my job, my co-workers, the park visitors, and most of all, that my office was Yellowstone National Park. Now I spend a lot of time, too much time, pacing, pacing my house, pacing my backyard, pacing the park. 
I was glad to be invited to my granddaughter Chloe's second birthday. What gift to buy? My daughter said that Chloe likes music, so I found a toy, toy piano for toddlers on Amazon. Just eight keys, but it can make the sound of an electric piano, an organ, even a DJ scratcher. But when Chloe tore open the gift wrapping, she pouted. I wanted Wonder Woman. I said, but do you want to try your piano? She shook her head. To try to entice her, I plunked out the only song I knew, Mary Had a Little Lamb. And Chloe turned away. Grandparents spoil. So I said, okay, I'll get you Wonder Woman, and bought the cheapest one I could find. I kept the toy piano because it was a hassle to ship it back to Amazon. It was only 20 bucks. When I felt tired of pacing in my otherwise boring life, I would occasionally, trial and error, plunk out other simple songs like Old MacDonald and uh, Row, Row, Row Your Boat. Then I wrote words to those ditties about what I know, parks, cops, even an anti-drug PSA, and I posted them on YouTube. When I next visited Chloe, I brought the little piano and played my ditties for her. Yeah, in part to show her what she missed, and she said, I want it! I asked, where's Wonder Woman? She replied, I don't know. And the final story I'd like to read for you today is called At Knife Point. In a ski mask, Anthony hid behind a tree where he could see Bob put his card into the ATM, enter his password, and click Get Cash. Anthony rushed behind him and took a knife, uh, stuck a knife against his back. 300, now! Bob pressed 300 and the bills slid out. Leave it there, don't turn around. Bob said, I can turn your life around. My life don't need turning around. If your life didn't need turning around, you wouldn't be doing this. You're going to make me a grand a day, 365, tax-free? You're going to make 100K risk-free, and you won't end up in jail. You're going to work for me. You're full of shit. I'll pay you 20K up front. Anthony pulled off his ski mask. You want me to sell shit? If you mean drugs, no. If you mean selling something good, yes. You're going to sell quality knockoffs of basketball jersey they sell for 200, and you're going to sell them for 20. You'll keep 10, and I'll keep 10. What, you go open me a store? Your store will be a cart. I'll go to the city government, get it licensed, and you can sell wherever you think you're going to sell the most shirts. Outside Oakland, Oak Oakland Arena, where the Warriors play. I don't know how it worked out. If I had to bet, Anthony would do it for a while, succeed, and then start fading. What do you think? In any event, those are four short, short stories. Um, I do thank you for watching, or if you're listening to this on a... Uh, podcast, uh, my How to Do Life podcast, great. As always, I welcome your thumbs up and accept your thumbs down. I always look forward to your comments and especially like it if you hit the share button below. Share on your social media so that my efforts can have broader impact. And I am flattered if you choose to subscribe to my channel, which historically has been about my self-help advice around career, relationships, money, the meaning of life. But lately I've gone on a jag of uh, reading you the short, short stories I've written like these, as well as uh, um, doing some piano playing for you. In any event, I do thank you for watching. I am Marty Nemco.